Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Trevor with Maker Experiment, and in today's video, we got a new toy. Let's get into it. Meet the Epilog Fusion Maker. This is Epilog's new entry-level, production-capable CO2 laser. All right, in the power cord bag, we actually have a few options. There's one that's an open-ended wire, one that's for a 110 outlet, which is the one I'm going to be using. And then there are two other styles. I assume they are for other countries. I don't really know which countries these go with, but they do include all of these options. In the next bag, they have the lens and mirror cleaner, printer cable, ethernet cable, the grease, the hose for the air assist, USB drive for installing the software, the focus tool and the target for alignment, and a tool kit for all of the screws on the machine. There's a Romark sample kit, which if you open it up, has a swatch booklet of some of the materials, and then on the other side, they have actually included a few of the materials for you to work on yourself. There's a user manual with a bunch of information inside of that if you've never used one before. There's another packet with supplier information. It has a couple of products to try from JDS, catalogs of all the different products, as well as another supplier. It also has this gift certificate for JDS, which looks like it can only be used inside of the United States. And lastly, there's another bag that has an epilogue card that points you to the training that they have for the machine. Looks like a piece of glass in here, a keychain, a wood blank, and then an anodized aluminum card that you're going to need later. Before I finish going through the setup and running the first jobs, I do want to say that this video is sponsored by Epilog. They did send me this machine to use and create videos with. I did not pay for it. This machine is the Epilog Fusion Maker. It is a 30 watt machine. It does retail for $9,995 before any kind of shipping or anything like that. And this is Epilog's entry level machine. So I'll leave links in the description below where you can check out this machine, all of its specs and all the details. And if you have any questions about it along the way, put them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer all of those. Now that I've shown you what comes in the box, let's do a walk around the machine. One of my favorite parts about the machine, it has gas springs. So you can just lift the lid open and it'll open automatically for you. Once you open the lid, you'll see the lens carriage where the lens and a mirror are. There's also the black Kevlar belts for moving that back and forth. It also has the safeguard features to try to keep it as clean as possible. And it has a ton of Z travel. I think it's about seven inches. And the bed is magnetic, which is a great feature for when you need to hold down materials. It's also got the safeguard on the side to make sure that dirt doesn't get into the assembly over here and on the other side. And the assemblies with the red parts are actually for helping to raise and lower the bed, as well as you can loosen them to be able to level the bed. There's also the plug for the rotary attachments. And over here are a series of sensors and lights that are connected to the back side. And on the other side, it's pretty much the same. It has the safeguard here. It's got the same adjustable things on the bed. 
And it's also got this new part here where you can keep your focus gauge. And on the right, there's the LCD screen, the button to start the job, and a joystick that I'll show you later. One of the best part about Epilog machines is you can take off virtually every panel, which gives you access to all of the components, all of the belts, the mirrors, the laser source, pretty much every part. So if something were to go wrong and you had to replace a component, they will send you the component, you'll take off the correct panel, they'll walk you through how to change it out, and you can do that all yourself, which means you don't have to send your machine back in order to get something fixed. So here's the front panel, and in order to take it off, you just have to loosen these two screws. Then you can pull it down and slide it off. This will give you access to the machine bed. There's also a crumb tray right here that when you first get your machine, this bed's gonna be too low to be able to pull it out. But once you start working, you can pull this out, empty all the crumbs out of the machine from working, clean it, and then put it back in. This will also give you access to the belts that are underneath the bed. The other cool part when you go to put this back on is that there's a magnet here, a pin here, and another magnet here to help you guide it into place and put it back on correctly. On the right hand side of the machine, we have an exhaust control plug, a USB plug for doing firmware updates and things like that, an ethernet plug where you can control it with ethernet or with USB, indicator lights of the status of the machine, Back here on the right, we have the power switch and where you plug in the power cord. There's also access to the fuse in case you need to change that. And down here at the bottom is where you plug in the tube for the air assist. There's just screws going around the perimeter. Take those off and you'll see this. Here's the motor for the Z axis. You have your air assist line tube. You have the motor for the X axis. And you also have the motors for the Y axis. There's also the sensors I was talking about and then just cabling to connect things together. And a little bit to the right of that is the on switch and where you plug in your power cord. And down here at the bottom is where you plug in the air assist. And if you do happen to need it, here's where the fuse is. On the left side of the machine, you'll have this panel. And if you take it off, this is what you'll see. You'll see a Y-axis motor and you'll see one of the mirror assemblies. Other than that, this side's pretty simple. On the back left corner of the machine, you'll have this small access panel. And if you take it off, You'll have one of the mirror assemblies, another mirror assembly down here, and then you'll actually have access to the red dot pointer and where the laser actually goes into the mirror assemblies. So if you ever have to adjust just the red dot pointer or this one mirror, all you have to do is take this one panel off. On the back of the machine, you have the serial tag with all of the machine information. You have the exhaust port where you will connect the exhaust fan or whatever you're using to. And then you'll have the power supply behind this panel. I'm not gonna take that one off, but if you take this panel off, you'll see this. You have the metal laser tube here. You have cooling fans up here with some circuit boards controlling them. You'll also have the wires and everything coming out to connect to the boards over here. And then this piece here is the back of the power switch. So if you ever have to replace the power source or one of the fans or something like that, this is the panel you're gonna take off. Now that I've given you a walkthrough of the machine, I'm gonna show you how to set it up. The first thing I want to do is connect the exhaust. I'm going to take the exhaust hose from the filter I have and connect it to the port. It shouldn't be that hard to slide on. It should go pretty easily. And then once it's on, I'm just going to tighten it into place. That's it. Once the exhaust is connected, take your air compressor hose and connect it to the air compressor port. It should be a snug fit. Just try to pull it out a little bit. This collar should keep it in. And then take your power cable and plug it in right here. I would recommend putting the laser on a different power circuit than your air compressor and your exhaust. As far as machine setup goes, that's all there is. Because Epilogue uses an air-cooled tube it doesn't require any kind of chilling water circuit. Now that everything's set up, let's go ahead and boot it up, go over to the computer, connect it all up, and run our first job. Once you boot it up, you'll select your language, give your machine a name,
confirm you've installed the exhaust, which I have. And then you're going to grab your anodized aluminum tag. So you'll go to this bag, grab this tag out, and this is what you're going to use. Make sure you put the uncoated side up. There's one side that has a film on it. Make sure you use the one that does not have the film. And then just go ahead and place it in the upper left hand corner. Once you've done that, continue and you'll be ready to run the demo. When you're ready, go ahead and close the door and hit the play button. And this will be what your first job looks like coming off the machine. Also keep in mind that the machine does have built-in LED lights on both sides when it is powered on. Once you've ran that first job, you'll be able to choose which way you want to connect to the machine. I want to use wireless. It'll go through your local networks and let you choose which one is yours. And then you'll be able to insert your password if you have one for your Wi-Fi network. Once you punch in your password, click the green button It'll obtain an IP address automatically, and then it'll go through and set up your connection. Once it's finished, it'll say that you're connected, click the green button, and then you'll go over to your computer and install the software. So make sure you go to the website, download the software, or use the USB key that came with the machine. The website will have the latest version of the software on it. Then if you click the green button, it'll show you what IP address to use to connect to your machine. So make a note of that, when you go over to your computer. And keep in mind, you can save jobs to the machine if you want, and that's what this is talking about, and you'll be ready to go. Once you've gone through the machine side, go over to your computer and go to the Epilogue website that it gave you to get the correct driver. So here you'll see I'm on the Epilogue website under the Fusion Edge Maker and Pro firmware and driver. Down in the bottom right, I'm going to select the download 64-bit version of the software suite. It'll start downloading in the bottom left hand corner and just give it a minute to finish that process. Okay, once it's in your downloads, I'm going to go ahead and extract that into the same location. And then I'm going to double click on the epilogue suite and start the process. So right off the bat, I'll click next. I'm going to do a default installation and I will accept the licenses. And then just click install to get to the next step. Okay, once it gets through that, I'm going to click Next, accept the next license for the Ghost Script package, click Next again, and then I'm going to let it install into the printer drivers. And once that's all complete, I'm going to go ahead and run the software suite. Once I have the job manager open, you'll see that I have two machines already. I'm going to go ahead and hit the plus sign. You'll see that it auto detects the maker and it's searching for that system. This will take a minute to go through. Once it finishes scanning, I can select my machine. It doesn't like my name format because it doesn't like the apostrophe, so I'm gonna get rid of that. And actually, I'm just gonna rename this to the maker. Then I'm going to click finish, and you'll see that now it's added. It does have the camera icon, meaning the camera is working. So what I'm gonna do from here is I'm actually going to run a job and send it over to the maker. So in my design software, I have the Aztec calendar, I'm going to hit print, choose the epilogue engraver, make sure that the maker is chosen in the machine, and I'm gonna put a piece of material inside of here. And on the epilogue machines, you actually have two rulers here that sit proud of the actual vector table. So that gives you a nice corner to register against. So if you're using jigs or anything like that, it is a repeatable zero zero so that you can reuse jigs machine things in the same spot. It makes it really easy for production level use. Okay, I already hit autofocus. I can zoom in and see about where it's gonna land on my material. For the engraving, I'm going to choose the deep engraving setting, but I'm gonna change this to about 40% speed just to speed it up a little bit. I will leave the resolution and the power the same. 
I'm also going to change it to bottom up so I can watch it engrave. And then for the vector part of this, I'm going to import the settings for cutting eighth inch wood, which look like 15% speed, 100% power, and 20% frequency. And I want to do it on the inside out. Once that's all set up, I'm going to hit print and send it over to the machine. Once you send it over, you'll see it sent to the machine. Just make sure it's selected and then you can hit the play button. Overall, taking it out of the box, I did in one day just because I only had like five minutes. But getting it from setup and unboxing to hooking everything up and getting it to run took maybe about 15 minutes. If you're actually focusing on it and that's all you're doing, it takes maybe 10 to 15 minutes to get all of that done and you're up and running the job. Now, because I'm filming, it does take me a little longer to change camera angles and all of that, but the actual work that went into it was only about 15 minutes. So it's really quick to set up. It's really quick to send things over from your software and it's really easy to use. Another thing to keep in mind is Epilog uses a print driver style software. So it can use any software you're using like Microsoft Word, Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, CorelDRAW, whatever it may be, it can print from those softwares and then machine the job. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Again, if you have any questions about the machine, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and definitely check out my Instagram at Maker Experiment where I've been sharing this machine a little bit behind the scenes as I've been getting into things. So make sure you go over there and check that out. Also, I do have a membership called Lasers Made Simple where I am doing more intro to lasers, more details on how to make products from start to finish, the full details with step-by-step -step instructions on how to do everything to make a product that you can sell. I also do group lives every month where I will get on with all of the members and go through a topic of your choosing. So keep that in mind. I'll also link that in the description below. But thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.